everybody and welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be talking about drones. Now drones have been here a couple of weeks and you've probably watched every other YouTube video that's to do with them so you pretty much know the ins and outs and you might have an idea of how they work now. So what I wanted to cover is something from a slightly different point of view. I wanted to cover the costs and also there is a, a hidden nerf to the Ravana on top of all the other nerfs that was deliberately put there or I'm pretty sure was deliberately put there before the the, uh, the drones came in so I'm gonna cover that and I want to show you a really economical the cheapest basically but most effective way to run your hangar to make it work without needing to go to ridiculous lengths of expense so drones let's have a look first of all so I have got four of the bog standard the simplest the cheapest drones when you go into a drone let's let's uh, choose this one and we can even talk about getting a cheap one you'll see the cheapest one is 50,000 silver now most people if not all people you can get that in a single game silver of that value is pretty easy to come across the half a million the five mil ones going upwards you know it gets a bit harder but it's obtainable then you get into the gold ones now what are you buying well everything you're basically buying battery capacities what do battery capacities mean basically the higher price drone you buy the more chips you can put in it that's that's as simple as I can put it so when you buy one of these drones there is a slight I, I, I don't want to call it a con but there's a huge amount of gambling involved and I don't agree with this. If I want to buy, so say I want to buy a drone right now so that I'm running all the drones that are pretty much the same. Click on change drone, go to the store, I'm going to buy the cheap drone. Now you'll notice to the left and the right where you would put the chips there's a question mark. That's because it's random. You can't choose what kind of chips you can put into this drone. It's completely random. So we'll buy one, <coughs> excuse me, you see that we've got a square icon and a triangle icon. Now, if you don't know what this means, basically, the chips are divided into categories. There are chips that are really good at healing you, really good at affecting your weapons, really good at your defense values, and uh, then <laughs> there's another one, I don't know, I don't use all, the, all of those ones. And basically, these two correspond to that. Now. If you want to have a really effective, um, cheap drone like like this, you need the circle symbol. The reason being is the circle symbol is the one that affects your weapons. So if I'm going to have to gamble again, so we change the drone and we go to the store, and there we go. So now we've got one with double. So I'm a hundred thousand silver down. Not a huge expense. And if we click on, <coughs> excuse me, if we click on this. In the inventory, you'll see that I've got quite a lot of um, blue ones ready to go. So I'm going to choose the suppressor. We install. So now whatever um, bot this drone accompanies, it will now add suppression onto the weapons. Now you'll notice that just above that drone there's that little lightning symbol. It says 4 out of 4. Because the chip we've put on uses 4 battery, the drone's only got 4 battery, that's it. Can't put another chip on it. This is the disadvantage of the cheap ones. But is this a disadvantage? <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about the cough, guys. Is this a disadvantage? Do you need to spend more? <laughs> Absolutely not. So, <laughs> here's where there is another con. So, if you was to click on the store for the circle symbol, you will only get circle symbols. So, you can't buy anything else, right? Now, if we click on the triangle and go to store, you will only get the triangle, but you only get three. You'll see here, if you don't like those three, you can refresh it for free watching an ad, or you can spend 50 gold. After you, <coughs> excuse me, after you've spent that 50 gold, that gold goes up, and then it goes up again, and then it goes up again, and it will go to the point you will be spending a thousand silver just to get a refresh you know let that sink in your thousand gold does nothing other than gives you more options to spend more gold guys don't do this 
if you don't see a chip you like, just wait till the next day. Just watch the ads. All right, don't put too much money into this. So, how do you play drones cheaply? So, this is the cheapest lineup I've got. Each drone is the <coughs> excuse me is the fifty thousand silver one. Each drone only has one chip. So, what have I spent? Well, one hundred and fifty gold for the chip, fifty thousand for each of those. That's it. What have I got from this? Well, you might not think it was super effective, but every weapon that I now have on every bot now has double the abilities. So the other thing that I've done, when you're choosing your drones, line the drones up in correspondence to the bots you want to use them on. Now, the reason you do this, <coughs> excuse me, when you go into a, uh, a match, if you want to drop quickly, if you're in beacon match, uh, beacon match, beacon uh, rush, and you need to drop on a beacon quickly, you don't want to fumble around picking which drone you want. So when you go into a match and you pick the bot, you can double click your thumb because the drone choice will appear directly underneath. So for instance, if you look at the top right, I've got the scorpion. So the second I select the scorpion, I will tap it once, and then you will tap it again, I would have scorpion with suppression. That's it. No need to choose, no need to stumble. It's super, super effective. Now, a lot of you might have been seeing um, other YouTubers and who have battle rec accounts. Now, I want to point out to you guys, for, for please, don't compare yourselves to battle rec. Oh, I can't even talk today to battle wreck account users or people with a lot of money if you're not in that position. It doesn't matter. You don't need them. The gold chips, like for instance, here's today's deals. Do we have any chips into that? There. One drone, 60 pounds. What are you getting for that one drone? It's just a drone. It's just a drone that has a high capacity. So you can put a couple of chips on it doesn't mean that your robot is going to act that much more effective a lot of the chips have specific abilities so the defense ones they don't just give you defense all the time you have to fulfill a criteria you have to have taken a certain amount of damage over a certain amount of time you have to have suppression active and they only work for five seconds now this this is the big thing other than the weapon ones, almost everything else only works for a very limited time. Your defense ones will only kick in for about five seconds. Your regen ones only kick in for a couple of seconds. The weapon ones work the entire match. They always affect your weapons, they're always active. They are the best, most effective chips. Now, the other thing you can do with chips, and and this is something else I wanted to cover, is the extreme cost if you want to try and go up the tree. So, you will notice there are different colored drones. There's gray ones, there's blue ones. If we click on combined drones, this is how you get the high tier ones. So tier one, it's telling you, you can put all the gray ones in to get one blue one. Well, I don't, I don't think there's any point in doing this because you would have to end up buying a huge amount of greens and whatnot. Just go for the blue ones. But some people might want a pink one. Now, you need 10 blue. So each blue, 150 gold, which means you're gonna need 1,500 gold to make a single purple. And then here's, here's the, the craziness about this. The purple you get is random. It doesn't matter if you put 10 circle symbols you might get a triangle single purple it's random what the chip does it's random for the the icon that you get so it's not worth the gamble even worse than that if you want the rarest one if you want a gold one <coughs> you need five purple by the time you've done the blues to the purples the purples to this one gold 7,500 gold this would have cost you. 
you've got five drone slots. Imagine you just want just one, just one gold chip on each drone. 37 and a half thousand gold. And if you're not using deals, what would that cost? You could spend 200 pounds, you still wouldn't have enough gold. Do you see, do you see the ridiculousness here? So stick with the blues, stick with the, the free refresh, and you only need one per drone. So something that I want to show you for the super effectiveness, but also I mentioned that little nerf. So the drone's effectiveness with the weapons works on hit and damage values. Now, you might know uh, that the recent nerf to the, the storm was that instead of making the damage the storm does go down, they reduced <coughs> excuse me, the amount of particles it fires. Now, there was a, a huge amount of question as to well, why did they do that? Why didn't they just lower the damage? Why the particle thing? Well, Pixonic knew that drones were coming out, and they didn't want to nerf this particular build of Ravana with storms down just to have drones completely reverse it and make it amazing again. So, by reducing it, the amount of pellets it actually fires, it heavily reduces how long it takes to have a um, a suppression or a lockdown or whatever it is you have on your drone actually kick in so before we go to any games i want to do a demonstration i'm going to show you the huge and i mean the huge difference between hitting a target with a storm with a drone and hitting a target with a corona with a drone now the corona and the halo they may have taken a slight nerf but the drones completely counteract this these weapons are now fantastic at making drones kick in then I want to show you the difference between having a flamer on an Al Jun hit its target with a drone and just its weapons. Because again, the difference between them is massive. Anything that has a constant rate of hit and a constant damage causes the drone to kick in almost instantly, literally a few seconds. And you've got to think about that when you're choosing complementary drones. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, for instance, the Scorpion, it's designed to do um, cloak and dagger. So it appears behind you, it shoots, it disappears. What you don't want is for you to appear behind the target and that target to start dealing you a huge amount of damage back. Because as we know, the Scorpion isn't the toughest bot. So, what bot do we give it? Well, we give it suppression. Because why not? You, you appear behind, you suppress your target, even if your target manages to turn around and try and shoot you, it doesn't do very damn very much damage especially since you've also now got resistance on the scorpion and you've suppressed your target they basically excuse me can't hurt you um what for instance top left phantom phantom has freeze on its weapons now what is the phantom's role normally beacon running what don't we want to see when we're beacon running another bot running in to stop us capping so you can freeze your opponent and do a huge amount of damage but now also you'll see you can lock them down so if you hit enough missiles you can lock them down on the way to the objective and that gives you enough time to sit there cap the objective and make it work super effectively so we're going to go uh, show you the tests first then I'm going to jump into some live games and I'm going to show you this hangar as it is with the cheapest drones one chip on each and you wait and see how effective this setup actually is. Right, let's get to the testing. Okay, so for this first demonstration, we're gonna show the enormous difference between the Storm and the Corona for getting suppressed. So we're gonna use the Ravana for this test, then I'm gonna to switch to the Scorpion having a Corona. Both of them got the same drone setup and the suppression. We're only gonna use one weapon, because if I use all of them, it's likely that we're just gonna kill uh, Vic's bot. So thank you very much Vic for allowing me to shoot you here. She's sitting opposite me if you haven't figured that one out. So let's start with the Corona. So I'm just going to fire one of them. Now watch how long it takes to suppress. There goes the entire salvo. 
And now we're on to loading a bullet at a time. Doesn't even look like it's moving. Maybe a pixel every now and again. It's absolutely ridiculous, yeah? So it's effectively, it just doesn't work. Now, if we... Oh, that's not what I meant to do. If we change the robots and we go to the scorpion. Now, I know I could teleport to her, but that would be unfair because obviously I'd have my tail weapon firing as well. So we're going to manoeuvre ourselves to 100 metres away and just fire one corona. And with the extra particles in the shot, and this, uh, oh, something else I'll point out, I do not have shot grouping on this robot. I did have it on the Ravana, so that would have actually improved the Ravana's chance to suppress. But here is the corona firing, so we're just going to centre it and... One corona, go. Done. One and a half seconds, suppressed. So you can imagine how quickly, once the suppression wears down, because she'll have a cool down right now. Suppressed, one shot. 0 0.1 seconds. Instant suppression with these three weapons. You can't do that with a Ravana. I've tried firing the three weapons, it's just not good enough. So, the next one I want to show you is the difference between the Ao Jun using its weapons and then using its inbuilt flamer. So we'll just go and set that up, and I'll see you in a second. Okay, so for this next demonstration, we're going to show the speed and hit difference between the flamer of the Ao Jun hitting its target with um, a drone, and it's just its weapons. So these weapons have a constant hit rate. Now they hit on what's called ticks. Now you're going to have to look up uh, how often they a tick hits and how it works because you would think it would be easy and it's really not. But I thought this would be a good demonstration of how quickly a weapon that constantly hits its target what, uh, would um, lock down. So I'm going to fly and the Nightingale is going to fly and I'm going to constantly try and hit the Nightingale during my flight and we'll see if we can lock it down in midair. Then I'm going to move three meters forward and fly and just use the flamer. And you'll see that there is a huge difference between the flamer hitting and any other weapon on this. So first of all, um, let's fly. Right, so Nightingale is going to fly. I'm going to lock on and try to lock her down. It took my entire flight to lock her down. So now what we're going to do is the same test again and I'm just going to use the flamer. Okay, so for this test, we've reset the bots, we've reset the HP. I'm going to go into flight mode again and this time I've moved couple of meters forward just to make sure I'm in flamer range just going to use the flamer and you'll see that the flamer's hit rate and damage is so much more effective than the weapons that you've got on top which is where the Ao Jun's ability to use these drones comes in really strong so we're both going to fly now the flamer kicks in and as soon as she starts taking damage locked So you'll see that if the flamer hits, you are in one and a half, <coughs> excuse me, one and a half to two second territory. The combination of all three of them, unfortunately if I was to demonstrate right now, would kill the bot. But it pretty much auto locks down very, very fast. So let's go into the live server, put everything we've seen to the test and see how we get on. Okay, we're going to start in domination. Because it's domination, I'm going to start with the scorpion. Because it's not important to get those beacons ASAP. Be nice if I could drop in. There we go. So we've got one guy making a dash for this beacon over here. He should run into teleport. He's used his phase shift already. And I'm going to get behind him. 
Locked down and suppressed in pretty much an instant. I'm going to get around the corner here. Now I'm going to stay on this beacon for now. Let's see if we can suppress some people through there. I'm going to work my way around here. There's everybody that's inside the arena is trying to shoot me. this guy again. So pretty much no damage can come from him. That's him gone. Just checking the ranges of where people are. Okay, let's jump behind this guy. Which I think is the same guy that was at the beacon. Right, he's locked onto me, so now I'm gonna pull back. Lock down, warm off, not lock down, lock on, suppressed, and popped. So important again. Go behind this guy that's actually shooting us. Now, fortunately, Quantum Sensor does like instantly remove any effects. <laughs> there you go, suppress the guy that jumped behind us. Okay, let's jump into the Fenrir, also with suppression. If you're wondering why I use suppression so much, it's probably my favourite uh, slash most effective one that you can put on a bot. Because you are, you're almost rendering any weapon the opponent has to being useless, but it's also very effective against Titans. Sometimes we don't always have a Titan left to fight a Titan with. So let's try and suppress this guy. So he is suppressed. Let's see the symbol. And the counter heal here. Oh, he's a one-shot kill. Can we get the shot? There we go. Let's push into center. And counter heal. So I know there's a scorpion just the other side of the uh, just the other side of the wall. Be able to get this guy for boxing range. So we've got a guy just here. Take him out. So I'm going to work my way back over here. Try and help out my teammate by suppressing this Al Jun. Sadly, a little too late. But he was. Oh well. <laughs> if it means anything, you did get suppressed. <laughs> Make a push back for this beacon. Uh oh, uh oh, Titans, Titans. Ah, counter heal, counter heal. Get behind the signpost. That that well known thing for giving amazing cover. Okay, so I've got three Aljuns firing at me. But they, uh, they underestimate the power of a, a roadside sign. <laughs> So we're going to get within 300 of this guy, counter heal, should be able to suppress him, maybe even freeze him up, there you go, frozen and suppressed. So let's drop in with Aljun, Aljun with lockdown. Now yeah, I know I can bring my Titan, but I'm trying to, trying to demonstrate everything here. We're gonna try and get this guy. We don't want him to get to that beacon. And that's hopefully we're gonna drop right by the door. I just managed to get in there. Oh, lag, lag. 
then under this guy if I can. No, he hit the floor. Come on, fly, fly, fly. There we go. So get some decent damage in with a flamer. Got him. I think that's a hawk. Yeah, probably. Uh, you know what? Let's drop in with the phantom. I want to keep the pressure on the beacons here. So while those guys are distracted, I'm just going to make it a run for them. If I can get to that hawk, that would be ideal. That hawk is going to start wiping out all my titans otherwise. Okay, cool, got him. And lock down that Titan. Lock down, there we go. See how useful these weapons are becoming? Okay, so now we've got a leech going for the uh, the ultimate recap of everything. Lock that guy down. It doesn't really matter in this guy, but we're going to lock him down anyway. <laughs> and there you go. So you see, each weapon's having the double roll makes them just so more versatile. In fact, the the uh, simple setup with these drones means that if you've got any of the weapons, even the starter weapons like the Merlot, the Punishers, they now are really useful. You can have a Punisher that before wasn't considered particularly great with its damage output, etc. You, you could give it suppression. You can give it lockdown. If you want to spend more, you might be able to get a drone that does both you know it's it's absolutely amazing so let's get into a free-for-all match and see how these weapons affect one-on-one -on -one in free-for-all see you in a minute okay we're going to drop into this free-for-all game you don't want to be the first one to drop so again i'm going to drop straight in with a scorpion there's loads of revivers kicking them out by the look of it uh, oh dear, this guy's dead. Instantly suppressed, locked down, and dead. So what do we have now? We have another scorpion, so to prevent him hurting us, let's uh, suppress him. There we go, suppressed. On to last stand. Are you going to teleport back, my friend? We did teleport back, so now we're going to follow him. Finish the job. We have a nemesis, so he's got a shield. Let's hide back. Shield's gone. Suppress. Should be able to suppress this guy. There we go. Suppressed. Just the speed that it works is in, in it's just insane. So hopefully we could take this guy out, a few shots, teleport back behind him, finish him off. And go for the Nemesis shield, that's the postman <laughs> in the background you can hear. See who says the scorpion can't brawl? What we got here, right so we want this guy to use his ability. So, there we go, we got his ability. My cooldown, I'm pretty sure it's faster than his. Now, we might have the full hardy to get it twice. But you've got to work a little bit with bits. But there you go, locked down, suppressed. And tail dot effect is going to work. on five kills with the first bot. I have to say, of, of all the bots, I have found the Scorpion to be the most effective with the uh, the single drone change. So let's get straight behind this guy. Just the speed you can suppress is it's amazing. Leech, I'm trying to suppress, there we go. 
even at nearly 300 meters, still suppressed down. <clears throat> and now we're going to teleport behind him. He knows what's coming. And I should still have enough. There we go. really start using another bot. This is not going to be a very good demonstration. <laughs> Come on guys, you need to kill this scorpion. Okay, see what we got here. So I've been leeched. Teleport back. Hope for the leech effect to wear off. Oh, I'm going to have my kill stolen. Oh, these damn scorpions. <laughs> Right, let's get into the, the Fenrir and also use Suppression. Because if this guy wants to teleport behind me, he is very welcome. So we're going to happily wander over to him until we get into his teleport range. Now you'll see that there is a wall to my right. As soon as I get in teleport range, I'm going to put my back against it. Turn my shield off. Wait for him to come to me. There he comes. Suppressed and frozen instantly. He's not doing me any damage at all. There we go. Yeah, how effective that suppression is. So, let's put this to the ultimate test. We can freeze and we can suppress, but that is a Titan. <clears throat> and it's one of the really annoying Titans. I'm going to use the shield just to get a bit closer to this wall. Counter heal. Right. Frozen, suppressed. Now we're gonna hide. Was that a quarter of his health gone already? Right, let's get another salvo in. And because he's suppressed again, I'm able to deliver the entire salvo. Almost unhurt. So he's counter healing. Let's suppress him again. <laughs> oh, this never gets old. Alright, let's use the shield just to quickly get behind this wall. Turn the shield off. Suppress him again. So we are going to die here, but we have taken the Ming down to half health. So, do I want to use my Titan? Nah. Let's use now Ming. How was you Excuse me. So we want to get that Flamer in range to do dot damage. Lock him down, especially while he's in fight. Let's see if we can lock him down. Yeah. It's not as effective. He knows it. ourselves behind the wall. We might be able to lock it down. And that expose myself to too much damage, maybe. Mm. Nearly. And now we are in happy flamer territory. Heal. Wait for our weapons to reload. He's going to have to chase us. I've still got last stand. Titan Slayer. And we got him. So he's got another bot. I can't change bots yet. Let's just empty this salvo. So, shall we show you another bot? Let's show another bot. Let us use... Let's use the Phantom. Because it'll be fun. Alright, there we go. I could be wrong here. I, did he... Was he a scorpion? I think he was. Yeah, that's a scorpion. Down. 
down. There we go. So now his suppression's gone. He is locked down. He's iced. I'm going to activate my ability. Run out. The whole time building up the salvo. And now he'll be iced. And hopefully locked down in a couple more shots. He's going to appear behind us. Counter heal. Behind us again. There we go. Does he have anything else? Nope, that's game. So again, the, the effectiveness of the weapons be, being doubled is just amazing. The Scorpion, as you saw, basically ripped through the entire enemy team by itself. Um, suppression, I would recommend, is the one to aim for because it's there isn't a circumstance it's not useful in. There isn't a time that you you don't want your enemy to do almost no damage. There's times where lockdown might not be particularly useful, icing might not be particularly useful, but nerfing the damage the enemy can do to you is always useful. But hopefully this will give you an idea of where to go from here if you haven't used drones or you're new to drones and you don't know where to start. Remember guys, don't spend money on these things. You don't need them. Just get the nice, cheap and cheerful. Occasionally treat yourself to a blue one. Watch the ads. Don't pay for refresh and enjoy. If you've got any other combos that uh, you found, you know, please let me know. Any other tricks, let me know in the comments. If you like what you saw, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up, subscribe, chat to me in the comments. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and goodbye.